Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about self-hosted services and how to expose them to the internet. I have an old laptop that is sitting in my shelf that I use to host some of the services that I use on a daily basis. The same laptop also hosts some of the internet facing services that I use. An example could be like a public website, a photo album, a video hosting service, etc. In this video, I'm going to show you how exactly I expose those services to the internet in a safe manner. Now, of course, there are a number of ways you can expose a service to the internet. Port forwarding is one of the most common ways using which people expose their services. In my personal opinion, I don't think you should be doing port forwarding unless you know exactly what you're doing. It is a very easy way to expose your local network to the internet. Now, of course, you can use a VPN setup such as a tail scale, but that would require that everyone who needs access to your service, they need to be able to use that VPN. So I'm going to talk about how exactly I expose my services to the internet. So this is my setup. I have a local laptop where I host my services in a Docker container. And I also have a cloud virtual machine that is running in DigitalOcean. So I connect my local machine to this cloud VM using WireGuard. And I have an Nginx server running on this cloud VM, which will act as TLS termination and the reverse proxy. It will proxy back to the services running on this local machine. This is what I'm going to be showing how to do today. I'm not going to be explaining how to set up a WireGuard client and server. I have another video I will link in the description. Before you proceed, make sure you have a local machine, a cloud VM and a WireGuard tunnel between them. All right, so I have SSH into my local machine. This is a virtual machine I am using for demonstration purposes. And I have also logged into my reverse proxy server that is running in DigitalOcean. Here is my simple DigitalOcean reverse proxy server. For the purposes of reverse proxy, you don't need a powerful machine. You can get a really cheap, really low powered machine that should be able to handle any sort of traffic. Now you could be asking, if you have a cloud virtual machine, what is the point of hosting the services locally? You might as well just host it on the cloud VM itself, right? And you would be right, depending on what you are hosting. For example, this machine here that I am paying $4 a month for has only 512 megabytes of RAM and 10 gigabytes of disk. But my old laptop, on the other hand, has a six core CPU and 24 gigabytes of RAM. You get the point. This is more than enough for the purpose of a reverse proxy. The reason being, we are going to be running only Nginx in this service and the only thing Nginx has to do is just proxy the connection back to our server where everything is running. That means 512 megabytes of RAM is more than enough. The only thing that would be limiting you in this case is bandwidth assigned to your machine. For example, if you are planning to host a video service and uh, reverse proxy it using your uh, cloud VM, you need to make sure that you don't run out of the bandwidth. If we look at the pricing for this machines, we can see that the 512 megabyte version gives you 500 gigabytes of transfer a month for $4 a month, which you can easily double it to a terabyte a month for $6. So for my personal use, I use this one, which gives two gigabytes of RAM and one CPU and two terabytes of bandwidth. And let me show you my bandwidth usage. So it says last month you transferred five gigabytes of data. So it's not even that much. You're going to be totally fine to start with the smallest one available and you can easily resize it whenever you need it. All right. So let's get back to our server and the client. All right. So I have logged into my server in DigitalOcean and the client, which is on a local virtual machine, and I have set up the wireguard connection between them. Let me show you. As you can see, the client and the cloud VM are connected via a VPN tunnel and we should be able to ping each other. So from the client, I'm able to ping the server, which is the reverse proxy. And from the reverse proxy, I am able to ping my local machine. Okay, so I use Docker to host all of my services. And in this case, I'm going to use Docker to host a simple demo service for this video. So I'm not going to show you how to install and set up Docker. I already have Docker running on my local machine. If you do not know how to do that, their documentation is pretty straightforward. You can use it and install Docker. Let me just show you that I have Docker running. So we have Docker running. And um, we do not have any containers running right now, but Docker is set up and ready to use. For this video, I'm going to use this demo hello world service that I wrote 
using docker so i can run docker run dash p 8080 colon 8080 this is to expose the port number 8080 which is on the container to the port number 8080 on this host in this case this virtual machine all right so we can see that it's a starting http server at 8080 so i opened another ssh session to the same client where the http server is running and if i use curl to make an http request to localhost 8080 i should see that my service is responding to me and you can see the host name here hello from this id which would be the container id of that docker container which is this one so we have our service running and uh, in our example this is our self-hosted service that we want to expose to the internet all right so now back on to this reverse proxy what happens if we try to curl this service using the ip address of the client that we assigned through wireguard but from the vpn server which is the reverse proxy we can see that we are able to access it this is pretty much the idea we simply connect our client and the server using wireguard and then just simply use the vpn private ip address to proxy pass anything to that of course this doesn't mean that this service is now available over the internet the service is available from this machine but it's still not exposed to the internet so that's what we are going to be doing next first of all let's go ahead and install nginx nginx will be our reverse proxy which will be exposed to the internet now i'm going to use the domain name to point to this publicly exposed service we are also going to be setting up let's encrypt for tls certificates i'm going to point a domain to this server that we just created so i use cloudflare for dns so i'm going to go ahead and add a dns entry for this demo website in cloudflare i'm going to use demo.ext.esc.sh and I do not want it to be proxied through Cloudflare. I just want it to be used for DNS. And I'm going to point it to the public IP address of the reverse proxy. Now let's ensure that the DNS has been propagated, which it has. If we go to demo.ext.sh, we can see that the default Nginx page is being loaded right now. But we do not have TLS enabled yet because we haven't done anything for that. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we have to install certbot and the certbot nginx module. So do have to install certbot and python3 certbot nginx. Next, we are going to create a simple snippet under etc nginx snippets let's encrypt.conf and we are going to paste this there which is simply saying that for the path of dot well known slash acme challenge it should use the document root of what ww let's encrypt we need this configuration because later we will be redirecting all the traffic from the http port to https port and that means when let's encrypt is trying to renew the certificate it will try to make a challenge to the same path and if that gets redirected back to the https port it could be problematic so this prevents that and let's go ahead and create the directory as well so I'm going to create a new config file at slash etc nginx sites enabled in the domain name. You don't have to use this domain name itself. You can use any name for the file name, but I like to use the domain name for the file name to keep things more organized. This is going to be a simple server block. We are going to be listening at port 80 and we want to include the snippet that we just created, which is let's encrypt.conf and the server name would be demo.ext.esc.sh and the document root would be and we will add index of index.html and that's it so let's save this file and um, ensure that we did not break nginx config we didn't so let's go ahead and restart nginx and let's go ahead and create that directory and let's also create the index.html we should see the correct website being served uh, now we are ready to set up the tls certificates using let's encrypt so we can fetch the certificates using sudo certbot dash dash nginx dash d the domain name now if you want to use the www dot the domain name version as well then you can just pass that along here and you know you will get the certificates for that as well i'm not going to do that for this video 
it is going to enter an email address that will be used for notification like you know when your certificate is about to expire they will send a notification so i'm just going to use my email and um yes i agree to the terms and um i do not want eff to send me emails all right so it looks like that worked and uh, we have our certificate and the private key saved at this location we can also see that certbot configured our config file with the appropriate certificate files let's go ahead and take a look at what it did all right so as you can see let's encrypt configured our certificate and all the parameters automatically so that is the beauty of using the dash dash nginx flag in the certbot command so we don't really have to do anything they also added a redirect for the plain http version back to the https version of the website which is nice now we should be able to see that the website is being served with https it's a let's encrypt certificate that will expire three months from today so as you know the let's encrypt certificate will expire in 90 days but we can re renew it easily by using a cron job so i'm just going to copy and paste this sudo cron tab dash e it will ask me to pick a text editor i'm going to pick vim but you can pick whichever text editor that you find convenient and uh, you know i to go into the insert mode and then just paste it here here we have two cron job entries both of them will run every monday at 2 30 in the morning and the first one will do certbot renew which will renew any certificates that are expiring and the second one will reload nginx so basically we don't have to worry about the certificates expiring anymore as long as these cron jobs run properly that is so call and wq to exit so we are all set with the certificates and our website is serving the hello from the new website text that we added directly to the reverse proxy but that's not what we want, right? We want to expose our service that is hosted locally through this website. Let's go ahead and edit the Nginx configuration once again. And in the server block, we are going to do a simple proxy pass. That is, all the requests should be passed directly to the backend, which would be HTTP 10.0.0.2 colon 8080. This is the IP address of the client that we configured through WireGuard which we are able to curl directly from the proxy like this now that with the config in place let's verify that the nginx configs are all good oh it's not good unknown directive okay well yeah i i forgot the directive name which is proxy pass basically what we are telling nginx to do here is for any request that is coming for this domain name, for any of the path, pass it to this backend. Let's save the file and exit and try that again. That looks good. And let's restart Nginx once and see what we have here. And there you go. Now we have successfully exposed this service to the internet with TLS and uh, this is coming from the docker container running in the virtual machine on a laptop that is sitting behind me in this shelf now of course this configuration is going to be different for different services like you cannot simply do a proxy pass and expect it to work for all the services but you should be able to easily find nginx configuration that works with any of the services that you would want to self-host for example you want to expose your jellyfin over the internet through the same setup you can just search for nginx config for jellyfin and their official documentation have the extensive configuration that works for jellyfin as you can see it has a bunch more headers redirects and you know websocket stuff etc so all you have to do is just copy this whole thing and place it in the appropriate server block that we just configured and that is pretty much it for this video see you in the next one